Welcome to ESR 140. This is Jules. Week 1, Sustainability. Let's take a look at some of the personalities behind what we understand sustainable concepts to be. Ralph Waldo Emerson was inspirational to many that came after him. Ralph Waldo was a philosopher and poet and essayist, um, born in 1803 in Boston. He spent much of his um, adult life gathering people around him who were setting the stage for the change of art and society and social change that became what we understand now as sustainability. Next on our list, John Muir. John Muir is uh, a, an explorer and naturalist. He wrote widely in leading journals of the day, known for his uh, journals and collections from walking across the United States. Muir loved the trees and was very passionate and wrote about this, what he saw, and it was very inspirational to a lot of more current day conservationists, namely Aldo Leopold. Aldo Leopold was a functional conservationist um, involved in uh, forestry, conservation biology, sustainable agriculture, wrote a seminal work called the Sand County Almanac wherein he described many of his experiences as a leading conservation biologist in very poetic terms from the viewpoint of someone who had seen quite a lot of change and had a philosophy about it. One thing he wrote stays with me. He wrote quite a lot about chopping wood and how the active activity of chopping wood was very cathartic to kind of understanding an environment. The wood grows over a long period of time providing a resource. The resource can bring heat in the winter time and all of these things kind of come together as a a sensory experience. So you smell the wood burning, you see the wood burning, you feel the heat of the wood. You can even taste um, the wood as it is burning. So he talked a lot about the tools for cutting wood because cutting wood wasn't just about hacking it up with a power saw, it was cutting it back philosoph uh, philosophically. Uh, looking at um, why you would cut it on some angles and how you can only split it by splitting it in certain ways. Splitting wood is important because you're not going to get it to burn unless you get a small enough piece and it's a process. He pondered quite a lot about um, how to get this to happen and then ended his pondering on wood with this. These things I ponder as the kettle sings. So he's having a nice warm cup of something provided by the heat that this tree had held. And the good oak burns to red coals on white ashes. So there's a visual reminder. Those ashes come spring. I will return to the orchard at the foot of the sand hill. So he's going to take that resource now, which is an ash, and as a nutrient, return it to the plants there outside. They will come back to me again, perhaps as red apples, because the nutrients from the burnt wood, the ashes, will provide potassium and a variety of other nutrients to the wood, um, from the wood, directly into the soil in and in be taken up again by plant roots. Perhaps they'll come back as red apples or perhaps as a spirit of enterprise in some fat October squirrel who for reasons unknown to himself is bent on planting acorns. So that is 
reinforcing the idea of a, um, a cycle. It's a cycle of life and death and uh, a cycle of adaptation to what environment was there. Squirrels are highly adapted to leap back and forth into trees. They also consume the fruit of trees. They also bury the fruit of trees in many places. And in doing that, and forgetting many of the places they've planted these acorns, oak trees begin to grow again. This sustainable process over time has been, has produced these amazing forests that we now look at and consider a resource. This week, I would like you to understand your ecological footprint. This program is called the um, Center for Sustainable Economy Footprint, and it is an ecological footprint, which is not just a carbon footprint, but is a footprint that measures the amount of space it takes for you to conduct your lifestyle as you are living it right now. It looks not just at the carbon you put into the atmosphere, but it also looks at the um, the um, possibility of you reducing that carbon. Uh, it is looking at quite a lot of aspects. And for that reason, it's a valuable tool. Um, right now, they have a process where they would like you to pay one dollar to be able to run your ecological footprint. Because this is such an extensive program, it is worthwhile doing. I run this every year with my students in environmental science, and I find that it is a very good footprint program. We could find others, but I'm going to encourage this um, unless we have some uh, big issues as to why we shouldn't do it. One dollar is not too much for this, and it is um, a nonprofit group that maintains this information and uh, provides this tool for us to use. So I would like you to take your um, ecological footprint quiz and keep those results. You'll be able to print them and have access to them and I would like you to have that with you. I would like us to uh, post some chats uh, during the week about how we are uh, moving through some of this material, comparing how Leopold and Muir and Emerson uh, were inspired by each other, summarizing what we have learned from that, and applying that to a problem, and then evaluating how that affects us. The forum will be the place where we will post that assignment, and I will be reading about it, and you will be able to comment on other students' work. So, I hope you enjoy this week. Feel free to get in touch with me anytime you need to. I will be available to you during uh, this class um, all week. So, please let me know how you're doing. Good luck.